In May of 2024, something spectacular happened across the globe. A geomagnetic storm from the sun bombarded our skies with solar wind, creating some of the most stunning auroras in the last few decades. This nearly unpredictable event seemed to have a global impact in almost no time at all. If the sun really is this temperamental, then how are we sure that it isn't also causing climate change? After all, maybe the increase in temperature is all coming from the sun's natural cycles, and we humans are just along for the ride. Might be wishful thinking. Welcome back to another episode of Climate Myths Evolved. So the claim we'll be looking into is that Earth's warming has nothing to do with carbon dioxide in our atmosphere, but is caused by variations in the sun's intensity. To be honest, this can make a pretty compelling argument when talking to average folks about climate change. After all, how many of us have given serious thought to variations in solar radiation? Well, it turns out thousands of scientists have, tracking the sun's activity back hundreds of years to the days of Galileo. So what are we sure of? Is there any sign of the sun getting more active in the last few centuries? Well, what we do know is that the sun's activity follows two cycles. One is called the Schwab cycle, an 11 year cycle between higher and lower irradiance, and the other is the Gleisberg cycle, a slow ebb and flow over the course of 100 years. Together they form this slow, undulating heartbeat that causes the sun to pulse every so often. This means years with more sunspots, slightly higher irradiance, and gigantic auroras, just like the ones we saw this year. So could this be what's causing the Earth to heat up? This guy sure thinks so. Meet Wei Hawk Soon, better known by his friends as Willy. He's made quite a name for himself, with a PhD from USC, researcher for the Harvard and Smithsonian Center for Astrophysics, and even an astronomer at the famous Mount Wilson Observatory. In 2003, Dr. Soon and collaborator Sally Balayunas published a paper in which they discussed climate records going back a thousand years. Needless to say, Willie had some hot takes here. First was that the 20th century was not unusually warm for any reason, despite the temperature looking like this. Second, he implied that the reason for any warming has nothing to do with carbon dioxide, but is because of changes in the sun's activity. So basically just flipping the script on climate change. But how did he come to this conclusion? And could he be onto something? One way to test if Willy was right would be to compare the Earth's temperature to the solar activity. If they both follow the same pattern, then clearly the sun is what's causing the majority of Earth's warming. Well, here on this red line, we can see the Earth's temperature over time, and on the yellow, we can see solar radiance. Notice the narrow Schwab cycle and the wide Gleisberg cycle that we mentioned earlier. If we look at this little slice between 1900 to 1950, we can actually see that the temperature and solar activity do look pretty similar to each other. Now, the early 20th century happens to be during an upswing in our wide Gleisberg cycle, peaking in the 1950s. But as time went on and the Gleisberg cycle died down, Temperature did not. There is a clear divergence in temperature and solar irradiance after 1950, showing that something besides the sun is causing the Earth to heat up. And this trend has continued well into the present day. But that's not the only way we know the sun isn't causing climate change. We can also look at which parts of the atmosphere are heating up. If the cause of global warming is the sun, as Dr. Willie implied, then as more sunlight comes in from space, all layers of our atmosphere would show the same warming trend. However, if warming is coming from carbon dioxide, which stays trapped in the bottom layer of the atmosphere, aka the troposphere, then we would see all the warming at the bottom. Not only that, but by trapping all this heat at the bottom, it keeps more of the heat from reaching the upper layers of our atmosphere like the stratosphere. This would cause the stratosphere to cool as the troposphere hogs all the heat for itself. It turns out that's exactly what's happening. With troposphere temperatures rising 0.6 to 0.8 degrees Celsius between 1979 to 2018, and stratosphere temperatures dropping 1 to 3 degrees Celsius. So that covers everything. Seems like Willy is 0 for 2 on this one. But why would he say something so controversial in his 2003 paper? Oh, um, well, let's not look at who's funding this. Also, Willy soon has been exposed for taking funding from such vested interests as the Koch brothers, the American Petroleum Institute, ExxonMobil, Texaco, and the Southern Company, totaling to $1.3 million since 2001. But despite being incredibly biased and totally inaccurate in his paper, it didn't stop his ideas from taking root. Once word got out about Willy's paper, it seriously ruffled some feathers in the scientific community. Many experts strongly disagreed with the results, questioning if the goal of the research was not to advance science, 
but instead to support the dubious positions on climate change of some prominent American politicians. And that is exactly what ended up happening. When the McCain-Lieberman bill was proposed in 2003 to limit greenhouse gas emissions in the US, Senator Jim Inhofe, the very same Inhofe who threw a snowball on the Senate floor, cited Willie Soon in his argument against the bill. He made Willie's argument seem obvious, using it to tear apart the idea of limiting carbon emissions and stating publicly that solar irradiance and its variation seem highly likely to be a principal cause of long-term climatic change. The bill ended up dying in Senate. A couple years later in 2007, filmmaker Martin Durkin released his now infamous cable documentary The Great Global Warming Swindle. In it, he made numerous false claims about climate change, including some fantastic hot takes like volcanoes emit more CO2 than humans, the ocean will absorb all the excess heat, and the warming trend we see in the temperature record is because of changes in the sun, building upon the now debunked paper that Dr. Soon helped write. This was the second springboard for this myth, reaching over 2.5 million viewers in its first day. And just like that, despite there being no evidence to support the claim that solar variations are causing climate change, people latched onto the idea in their heads. Nowadays, due to the publicity that this idea was able to gather, there are still people talking and posting about it. This is the real reason why it's getting so hot out. This myth, like many other myths about climate change, are incredibly easy to believe if you aren't really exposed to science about the sun. It also allows the believer to mentally shift the blame for climate change from human beings and their unsustainable habits to a celestial ball of fire that we have no control over. Why should I bike to work if climate change is all because Ra is in a bad mood? The sobering truth is that the sun is not what is causing climate change. The solar radiation hitting the earth has decreased during the same period when temperature has been increasing faster and faster. We also don't see any warming of the stratosphere telling us that the warming isn't coming from above us. No matter how many Willie Soons and Martin Durkins there are out there, they cannot change the reality that humans are currently having a bigger impact on the climate than the sun. With all this being said, I think it's safe to say that the myth that the sun is causing climate change has officially been debunked. Thanks for sticking around to the end. Comment your thoughts on the video or suggest a climate myth you'd like to see debunked in a future episode. As always, the sources are linked in the description. If you enjoyed this, make sure to like, subscribe, and share to support Planet Zero. I'll see you next time.